Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse, and it's finally time for some more Elder Kings 2. And it's been a while since we last visited Tamriel, because I've been waiting for the latest update that includes the new DLCs, and it's finally here. Actually, it's been out for like two weeks now, but I missed that it came out, so I'm finally getting to it. And we're gonna play as General Heyron and Imperial in Cyrodiil, because there's a lot of stuff happening in Cyrodiil right now, so I want to take a swing at becoming the Emperor. Because long story short, a couple of years ago the Akavir Emperor and his heirs got murdered, a civil war broke out, and now everything is kind of unstable. And General Heron here is some kind of pretender to the throne, so we'll be able to get a claim on the Empire down the road. So let's just read his lore snippet and get going. Heron seeing the tragic death of Atribus firsthand did not temper the fire in his belly. If anything, he's convinced more than ever that he is the great man Cyrodiil needs, and that he will succeed where Atribus failed. To his credit, some loyalists acclaimed him general of the Colovian estates, although he must set camp in the rough hills instead of the rich plains. The estates will have to pacify all of Colovia before they can turn their attention to the Lord Protector. post Remonite, though, isn't everyone's favorite belief, however, but that can be changed. I guess uh, either we change our religion or we force everyone else to change theirs. Will the Colovian estates rise from the ashes under Heron, or will the Colovian pretenders fall apart a second time? Only time will tell, so let's get going. So we start as the king of the Colovial estates, although we're called generals, so I guess we're a military dictatorship. But I guess that's kind of true for most monarchies. But it's a pretty big kingdom. And I usually don't like starting as a king, because I prefer to work my way up from a smaller like duchy or count or something like that. But I wanted to have access to reclaim Remen's heritage, because this is what's going to give us a pressed claim on High Kingdom of Cyrodiil. We just need to get to Exalted Among Men. And uh, that's going to be kind of the challenge here. Well, it's not a huge challenge, because we are 38 years old, so we might die before we get there. But we're making quite a bit of prestige, and we only need to get to tier 4. And there's there's some stuff we can do to get a lot of prestige, so I think we can get there as long as we don't die too early. Otherwise, I hope this is hereditary, because right now we don't have any kids. Well, we have a bastard, but he doesn't count. So first of all, we need to marry someone. We need to get kids, so we have some heirs. And we need to get to exalted among men, so we can conquer the very fancy throne that we have here. Because we still have places to climb, or I guess places to be, because they have a much fancier throne than us, and we want it. So, we are not very diplomatic, we're very martial, we're okay at stewardship, and pretty terrible at everything else. We're a decent uh, fighter, and we actually have some magic. And this made me realize that uh, I think these are just randomized every time you load in. Because when I did a short test game, this this wasn't here. We didn't have spells. So I'm just used to Prince of Darkness where everything is set, but that's neat. New to me. But we're also gregarious, arrogant, and ambitious. So I feel like we're the character in the TV show that rises up against the good guys and gets beaten. Because I don't think we're the good guy here. <laughs> but that's alright, that's how I like it. We're a tough soldier, we're reckless, and we're under the birth sign of the mage. Which is, well, actually, we would be a mage even without that. So, that's pretty good. Uh, we have a couple of... Uh, we have some martial points. And we are right now in the gallantry, which is gonna give us some nice bonuses for our knights. And it's gonna give us a bunch of extra knights. So that's going to be very nice. And oh, we should actually pick something there. Because I think we're just going to finish this off to get to Gallant. Because it's pretty good and it's going to help with our prestige and uh, just give us some nice buffs. And Peacemaker is Peace Acceptance. Well, that's going to be handy once we start some wars. But I would I always like Dread. Dread is always fun. I always, well, some Knight um, or Commander advantage. Is also pretty nice if we're gonna fight. And I don't know if we're gonna lead. We are pretty good at martial. We got some traits, so we might. But uh, the attraction opinion is gonna be pretty useful in making bebes. So we're gonna go with that. So let's find ourselves a spouse. And ooh, a cute. Oh, 
Oh, you're the... You're the High Mage of the Imperial City. Oh, that's cool. Um, I don't think I'm gonna marry you then, because uh, that's gonna be an alliance we can't use against the... the Well, not the Emperor, but the Protectorate, I guess. So, and I would like to have someone sitting in my throne room to give us stats. So I think we're gonna go with some of these instead. Give us some... Does no one have any traits? There are no traits! <laughs> Where's all the traits? Okay, fine. I guess we don't need the traits. We could just find someone... Actually, let's see if we have any good traits. Um, well, you're pretty. Okay, you are got terrible stats though, and then Eliza starts ticking off. I guess you're not terrible. But you're pretty far away on a tiny little island. So, yeah, let's take that off and we'll pick one of these. Someone with good stats and someone that's pretty young. Who are you? You're... Actually, that's a pretty good alliance. Yeah, let's go with you then. Similar strength. You weren't that old, right? Oh, 42, never mind. Oh, I should have looked at that. Sorry about that. How about you? So, after scrolling through medieval Tinder here for a while, I think I'm gonna go with Princess Rosala of the South Wheel. First of all, she's young and she's lustful, so which is great if you want kids. But uh, South Wheel is also a pretty decent ally. They have uh, similar strength, they're close by, and uh, this guy isn't actually that old. Well, he's 50, so he is kind of old, but he might not die instantly. And since he is uh, kind of high-ranking, we won't have to pay a bunch of uh, prestige to do it. So I think this is pretty good. We think we're gonna go with that. She doesn't have terrible stats, which is nice. And there's no one with good traits, so I'm just gonna abandon that and go for her. And I think that's pretty good. And right, I wasn't supposed to un unpause right just yet. We still have some things to look at. We're off house door. We have, uh, well, we have no legacies yet, but we got some stuff to pick. And I don't know what to pick. We could just go warfare since we are going to fight a lot. So knight effectiveness would be very nice. And do we get any more knights here? No, but there is a lot of good buffs and knight effectiveness is pretty nice. How many knights do we have, actually? Twelve. Okay, well, that's pretty good. We can probably get more, but hey, it's a good start. Um, we could also go with... Uh, is it Glory? Yeah, there's more knights here, more monthly prestige, lots of fun stuff there. But I think we're just gonna go with Warfare because uh, we're just gonna focus on taking the Imperial City. After that, we'll do whatever we want. And I guess that's all we had. But we're gonna keep going down here, because pursuit efficiency and retreat losses is pretty nice. Causes belly cost is also very nice. So, I like this. We're gonna go down that. Uh, we also have the weird Nedic Nordic religion Remon Mysteries, who's uh, like asceticism's war worship, which is very nice if we're gonna fight a lot. And Legacy of Remon. Wait, is this what gives us the decision? Does everyone in this culture or this religion have that decision? Because I couldn't find anyone else with this decision. But either way, we got the well, kind of kind of normal fighty asceticism virtues. We don't want adultery and yeah, normal stuff. We got some holy sites as well, and the only ones we don't have is Temple of One in the Imperial City, and the Pale Pass for different culture opinion, which well, could be nice to have. Otherwise, we get some uh, piety per night, which is very nice since we have 12. That's gonna be 0 0.2, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty good, actually, considering that's 66% uh, of all of our piety right now. Extra martial, more prestige for powerful vassals on the council. Well, so we're gonna want a lot of... Uh, a lot of powerful vassals on the council, then. And yeah, yeah, and our culture gives us imperial legacy, formation fighting, malleable invaders, industrious, and blah blah. Those are all fine and normal. Got lots of knights, and oh, you are terrible. And we can't switch. Oh, I hate it when you can't switch. I want to ask for another one. 
But she kind of likes us, but let's uh, make her like us a little bit more because I want this to not dip anymore. Oh, you are absolutely terrible. Um, I mean, you are a powerful vassal and a member of the dynasty. But I also would like to have some kind of uh, functional chancellor here. So we're just going to pop him in there. And uh, probably give him land as soon as we can just to make him a powerful vassal. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Actually, do we have anyone better? We do, but none that is a powerful vassal. Are you good at anything else? Well, it doesn't really matter. Well, I guess it does kind of matter with you. Who is stronger? You or you? I guess he is slightly stronger, so I want to piss him off less. So I guess that's fine. And anyone better? Well, yeah, but... Oh, well, he's... He is definitely not powerful. We can we can bump him off that pretty easily. We might just pop this guy in there instead. Or this guy. Because they're equally bad. Or we just pop this guy in and make him powerful. Nah, let's do that. That's fine. So, I think we can unpause in that case. We're swaying factions. The others are kind of normal, so we don't have anything special except for we claim the Remnant's heritage. And I don't think we need any of these. So, let's unpause, see what happens. And we have a marriage to get. Excellent. So, wedding celebrations. With my marriage with High Lady Rasala, the realm expect us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during this time of jubilation. So, we can grab a little bit of money. Or grab a bunch of prestige, which I think we're gonna do just to progress this. There we go, that's a nice little step toward distinguished. Oh, someone wants to make something. Oh, we should have had a look at this as well. I'm not used to having a court when starting a game, so... But how much would you want? Just 72. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might want to do that, but let's finish this first. And with the blessings of Mara, I now declare Heron and Rasala to be newlyweds. The crowd shared and made a line to congratulate both me and Rosala in our new adventure. While we're receiving such a congratulation, uh, Munius approaches us saying that our ceremony has inspired him. We pondered what, uh, what that could mean. He asked to be considered for sponsorship. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. I didn't realize that was part of the event, but yeah. Go. Go to Morrowind. Have a good time. So, you are assisting, this is fine. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything in particular we want help with. We could bump Intrigue just to avoid getting killed, but I think we're alright. Oh, and we're gonna check out the court. First of all, we have an event. Each day it seems my court is a buzz with talk of the next banquet. And many have grown rather more portly as of late. The culinary activity is fueled by High Lady Rosala's uh, Clevia and Alessandra's constant vying to demand the most memorable meal from my overworked cooks. Today is my knight's Alessandra who drools my leash tonight. I am having the kitchen prepare the richest sauce known to man, served with ten bird roast, licking her lips hungrily. Uh, Prelate uh, Anodia sighs disapprovingly. These fleeting pleasures are nothing compared to Remen's grace. I can't wait! Well, we are a reveler. I guess this... Could count as reveling. Only the best for my court. Uh, this extravagance has gone too far. No, no, no. We're gonna be a reveler and just get excited for some tasty meat. So, court artifacts. We have Doorhouse Banner. With a little bit of prestige and renown. A little bit cheaper men at arms. Not terrible. Not great. And more prestige and more renown. That's pretty alright. That's actually quite a bit of prestige. I like it. And let's just unpause again. Inspiration funded. The time has come for me to depart upon my adventure, my general. 
My knight Munis bows, bows as well as he can while weighed down by heavy bags. Before I leave, please tell me, is there anything specific you want me to keep a, uh, keep an eye peeled for during my journey? Uh, truly unique uh, skull or hide from exotic animal, trinket made from material you cannot find here, tapestry or artwork, or... I think I'm... I don't think I want anything in particular. So I might just ask him to follow his instincts. He's the one with the inspiration. Who am I to tell him what to do? Well, I am the general king... Uh, <laughs> master of the universe. So I can tell him whatever I want, but I trust his instinct. Go get me something good. So, let's start... Seducing you. Yeah, we... We've swayed you and okay, I guess we've swayed you, kind of. Is there any? Okay, none of this is from my swaying. So, oh well, that's fine. She's She likes us, but it's more important that we get a kid. And I realize I should have a look at this. Oh, we are spending. Hello, big spender. So we have lavish food and we have middling lodgings. Stylish fashion. All right. Well... We can afford it. We could drag this down just a smidgen. Save a little bit of money. But we're doing really good on money, so I don't know if that matters. But I think I'm a little bit greedy, so we're gonna go like that. I think that's alright. Save a little bit of money. Because we got things to do. So, do we have any wars we can start? All oh, right, this time I should definitely remember to garrison some mana at arms because I always forget to do that. So, legionaries, we are gonna station you in our capital of. St Wait, was that not my capital? No. <laughs> I just saw a big flag. Uh, Sancrator. Sounds like a lot. Some uh, where some elves would live in Warhammer. And we're just gonna. Pop these in surrounding places. Oh, um, I guess we can... Can we station... No, we already have stuff stationed there. Yeah, and there's nowhere else. Oh, because that's all of our holdings. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Well, you don't need to be stationed anywhere. You're fine where you are. So, let's see if we can... Uh... Oh! Uh, the twists and turns of faith has not always been to my advantage. Remen, Light of Man, known, knows that I was cursed the day I met Lord Protector Caius. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. Faith has smiled upon me and brought that squeamish churl to his grave. Well, isn't that nice? Now, who holds the Heartlands, then? My liege, my journey to Morrowind is underway, and I have hired a silt strider to travel the width of the land. I send you a piece of these lands... Uh, one of my fellow travelers granted me. A most dreadful golden mask shaped in the face of the late Indoril Nerevar. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I want to I wanna have an Indoril mask. Those are badass. Ah, oh, I thought I could wear it. Oh, well. I guess it just sits in the throne room then. Ooh, that's a lot of dread gain. I like that. And court ground your bonus. That's nice. I guess we should hold court. So let's do that. Sitting on my throne, I gesture... Oh, I don't need to read that. That's the same every time. <laughs> One of my guards approaches with my knight Tomos in chains, trailing behind him. I caught Tomos here in the process of sending sen sensitive information to foreign spies in Glade Mist. What should we do with him? Uh, Tomoso is the one who brings uh, this person in. Oh, you are a good knight, though. Oh, I like you. We will... I will... Wait. Oh, no. You're my guard. Because Tomos is in chains. Huh. Okay, well... Can I... Can I invite you? Yeah. Come to my court. I want you to be a knight. And I should pin you as well. But let's... Uh, 
Let's forgive him, get a strong hook. That's all right. My steward prior uh, Heron approaches the throne with a young man in tow. My liege and general, he spouts, my acquaintance Flavius Cestus seeks the honor of serving in your retinue of knights. Give him the opportunity to prove his qu quality. The man knows his way around a maze and will not let you down when it counts. So, you are also pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you may attend me. It's kind of free for us. I thought we were going to have to pay him, but yeah, attend me. You're going to be a good knight. Excellent. The next petitioner is evidently somewhat of a stranger in this court, as I do not recognize her. And the eyes of the Marshal Haterius has been on them since they first entered. My lord, I have come to declare that the people of Sto Stoneden are refusing to pay the taxes you have levied upon us. In times past, our land and peoples were granted rights and privileges, which you recently ex uh, ex exactions ignore. Uh, we require that you address our concern fairly, or else. How dare you? Or else? Okay, imprison this bastard. Ah, crap, we failed. Shit. <laughs> okay. Well, my business here is done. Whoa, wait. You died? How'd you die? I invite... Mm. So someone just murdered you. That was quick, man. Assassins in my court work fast. <laughs> so, who are you? Okay, it's... Uh, it's his wife, I guess. Or daughter? No, wife. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember who he was married to. But, uh, yeah, you are you don't have any allies. You're not super strong, so, yeah, that's fine. You are a pretty good general, though, and a very strong caster. Oh, speaking of caster, let's... Uh, no, um, where's the ritual thingies? How did I do rituals? Is it in cast spells? Oh yeah, rituals, there. So, um, we are generating how much? 1.2. Yeah, so we can afford to do some rituals. Uh, personal scheme success chance is fine. Health boost is very good. We do want to keep alive as long as we can. Ooh, a bomb weapon. But, I mean, our health is fine right now, so I think we're just gonna go with, like, a scam familiar, maybe? Get diplomacy, get personal scheme uh, success chance. Or also scheme resistance. Let's actually do the resistance. Because we don't really need bonus right now, because I think this is 95% uh, anyway. And I don't think... Does that count as a hostile scheme? This is a scheme. <laughs> Uh, my liege, you have heard what they call you. My Empress Rosala says to me while shrugging. They call you General Heron the Proud. Spectacular, is it not? It's on the lips of the peasants and nobles alike. A cause of celebration, I think, Rosala exclaims with a cheery tone. I can get used to that name. Yeah, very nice. Declaration of love. The clanging of weapons and excited, excited chairs draw me towards the courtyard. What's going on? I found two armored warriors engaged in a vigorous sparring match. Both of them have undoubtedly been tested on the field of battle. With a final reckless assault, one of the fighters disarms the other. To my surprise, surprise, she kneels before me and takes off her helmet. It is my guest, Edessa. I dedicate this victory to you, General Heron, she says solemnly. Bringing you honor is my only desire. You're an all... Okay, how good is our champions right now. Like, how fast does it fall off? Yeah, there's 12 then. So, about... Yeah, most of our champions are 12 or up. But it doesn't... I'm not against uh, her hanging out and just... Oh, she's, a, she's expensive though. Uh, never mind, just end it. And we can create some accolades if we wanted to. Ooh, we can go on a hunt. That's fun. Oh, we can't give it to the 
Provost 20 guy. Well, we can give it to Flavius here. We got plenty of prestige. And Pike Captain is... Uh, we do have Pikemen, so it's not bad. Because that's going to give them some bonuses, make them... We can make them bigger. And, I mean, more lifestyle experience is pretty nice. Otherwise, we can give him Stalwart, which is travel safety. Eh, not... Oh! No, okay, right. <laughs> That's not in accolades anymore. Well, I guess these are fine. Although, how many can we have? We can only have three. I might wait on that. So, first of all, I want to declare some wars. We can... Uh, we can take the entirety of the Barony of Broch, which is very nice. And he would still be under our under our well control. So I think we're just gonna start that war. Just real quick. And then we are gonna go and join that hunt. You may not arrive the hunt in time. That's fine. We're gonna join. Travel time 43 days, that's fine. And we have a dangerous destination, but I don't think. I don't think we can circumvent that, because otherwise you can just take a detour to avoid it, but that is unavoidable. Let's pop you in there. You're gonna be a caravan master. Kind of... okay. Um, we can go faster for free, but I don't think that's worth. I think instead... Well, this is not that dangerous anymore. I guess we don't really need any of these then. Yeah, never mind. He is good enough. So... Oh, do we have to go faster? You will not arrive in time. Okay, make haste. Okay, we can make get it there if we go fast. Oh, but we're still safe. So, join it. That's fine. Let's uh, actually... Put up a new little banner down here. Raise everybody. No, dang. Span. <laughs> Crap. Uh, raise all here. There we go. Running behind schedule. When my caravan leader Flavius approaches me with a mixture of shame and worry written all over his face, I know he bears bad news. I'm sorry to report that we're running behind schedule by about zero days. Okay, that doesn't sound like a problem. My general, and uh, we might not make it to the destination in time. Okay, so let's hurry. It's not gonna change anything, I guess. My spy master Baron Kostov is, is hosting a hunt in Cloudtop, and time has come for us to depart. This seems to have come in uh, the wrong order. There we go. And let's start by hunting you down. Might have been a mistake to do this simultaneously, because I feel like I'm gonna do something stupid. As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Baron Kostov has started on the preparations. His gamekeepers check the highlands each day for signs of a quarry, while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I have checked my gear and horse many times. I won't be... It won't be long now. Soon. Eloi assembles the party as the sun rises over the camp in the highlands near Cloudtop. The local gameskeeper have scouted vi the vicinity for recent tracks and fumes. There is clearly a small roebuck nearby, but no recent traces of larger game. Ultimately, Baron Kastav decided he wanted to hunt roe today. So, mild peril, pre uh, mediocre prestige. Very good. So, I guess just minimize that. Go and hunt you. And I guess, uh, yeah, you're gonna be leading. That's fine. They shouldn't be very strong. Uh, Baron Custom insults, insults Baron Menian. How rude. As the hunt goes on, you find yourself separated from your group, and in a part of the uh, in a part of the hunting grounds you have never seen before. 
Around you, the singing of the birds and the various noises made by bigger beasts have grown quiet, and you can feel higher presence overseeing this land. As you slowly press on, you find a small and secluded shrine dedicated to none other than the Daedric Prince Hircine, father of the hunt and prince of lycanthropy. This place is cursed! I will destroy this shrine! Uh, leave the shrine undisturbed. Issue a small prayer to Hircine for the well-being of the hunt. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to anger a Daedric Prince. That seems like a bad idea. That seems like how you get a werewolf coming after you. Take note of where the shrine is and come back later. Ooh, we can become a worshipper of Hircine. That's fun. I don't think... I don't know if that's the Daedric Prince I would like to worship, but that's fun. I think we're just gonna leave it undisturbed. Baron Castav's huntsmen say they know the place of the beast covert and the nearby water holes and grazings the row frequents. What the hell is this a covert? I know some someone being covert, but is it where they hide or something? I guess it is. Our host thinks for a moment before scoffing. I came for a real hunt. We will hunt by force, not stealth. You idiot. Oh, and do we... I feel like we look a lot like Robert Baratheon from Game, Game of Thrones. Like that is. Or maybe a little bit of Sean Bean even. <laughs> Either way, so be it. More perilous, I suppose. Prelate Anodia has become famous and highly respected figure amongst many Remen uh, cultists for her m honesty. No lie is too small, no truth too uncomfortable for this pious woman whose example is inspiring countless more uh, faithful every day. Um, yeah, that's my very terrible priest. Well, good for her. I still want a new one. <laughs> uh, cornering the row. We can hardly keep up with the blasted beast as it darts and weaves through the dense trees, barking wildly. Scaling a rise and disappearing into the dense thicket, the row is gone as quickly as it appeared, with only panting dogs and sweaty horses to show for it. The damn thing is gone. Okay, the hunt, the hunt fails. Empty-handed. Heeding the call of the wild is an adventure, and this outing delivered the good and the bad in abundance. Uh, Macrinius gathers the disappointed party and exhausted hounds for the trip home. Well, um, we lose a little bit of stress, get a little bit of prestige, we get Hunter, which is always nice to have. And uh, yeah, alright. Finish Hunt. Good enough, let's go and kill these guys. But I guess now we have to travel home as well. As I traversed the Barova Hills, a tranquil snowfall blanketed the landscape. All around nature's creation glistened beneath their icy shroud. Delicate icicles adorned the surroundings, creating a lustrous cascade of frozen wonder. The gentle caress of a light wind filled the air with melodious serenade. It was as though winter had bestowed its serene embrace upon Barova, offering a glimpse of paradise. Well, isn't that nice? I don't think we need to uh, delay it though, because we are final stress. And there we go. Ooh, got a bunch of martial experience from something. At long last, I am finally home. There is nothing better than arriving back in Sankrator after a long journey. I look forward to resting for some time, but the call of the road beckons ever onward. My caravan master, Flavius, reports that we have journeyed for 113 days and traversed 13 baronies. Thank Remen Light of Man, I can go inside again. My son and heir. Oh, I didn't even notice she was pregnant. Excellent. With a tired yet blissful smile, Rasala presents me with a perfect little son. My little son was born under the sign of the Lord. Well, that is very fitting because you will be an amazing Lord. Those born under this sign are said to be stronger and healthier than those born under other signs. One day, child, you will carry on my legacy. What name would benefit a general? We can just name him Remen. Octavian, very Roman. Maybe. Yeah, let's go with Octavian. That is very Roman and... I feel like the Empire of uh, the Elder Scrolls is nothing but inspired a little bit by Rome. <laughs> so, let's go with that. Let's... Uh, Go and actually siege what we're here to take. But that's 50% war score right there. So that's very good. Not every gift has to be gr a grand statement of wealth. Uh, smaller things can make a far greater impression as long as they are chosen well. 
I wonder what High Lady Rosala would appreciate. Silver locket. A fox, a stuffed fox that would certainly be unusual. I mean, everyone likes flowers or a silver locket. I feel like a stuffed fox might be a little bit messy. Especially, I just think of that, of one of those like incredibly terrible stuffed foxes in weird position. Like, if anyone's seen that terrifying fox uh, just sitting on a chair with dead eyes. <laughs> I think we're just gonna give her flowers. That never, that never fails. I received the flower displays you sent. I am unsure as what the reason you sent me a gift like this, but I took note of it. Well, you're, why didn't you like my flowers? What do you have against me? Uh, inspiration, flighty giant wasp in the floodplains. Oh, that sounds dangerous. My search has led me to the floodplains of Aldarion. They are notoriously giant wasp infested, but I have a good reason to think that my goal is near. Expect my return soon. Signed, Munius, the scroll reads. He surely is ambitious to choose such a risky path. Uh, Munius' knowledge should be enough to keep him safe. Uh, gains progress, but he might get wounded. It's pretty li likely. By Remen Light of Man. I hope he doesn't have to fight one. 64% uh, chance the artifact produced through him will be slightly better. 36 gains wounded and 25% uh, chance of that is maimed. Now let's uh, let's send some uh, send some good vibes vibes to him. And the artifact produced will be slightly higher quality. Excellent. Bandits on the road. My liege, the adventurer Munis sends word. The servant exclaims, holding out a letter. For ten days and ten nights, me and my party has been hiding for the bandit Lord Trehadu has set blockades on the road and we must travel. What do you advise? Caution? Or should we fight them? Trust, uh, trusting the heroes to keep us safe. Signed Munis. The parchment reads. It seems he is quite a, in quite the predicament. Okay, 100% chance he gets wounded. <laughs> Uh, no guts, no glory. Oh my god, 24% ch chance he dies. No, wait. 24% chance Trehadu is killed by Munis. The artifact will be better. 64% chance Trehadu will be wounded and better. Only 12% chance that... Okay, you're you're just a chump. Okay, you actually looked like a little bit intimidating, but yeah, you're you're a chump. Yeah, no guts, no glory. Make them pay for wasting my time. God damn it. No, wait, Trehadu. <laughs> I just thought we got the 12%. But no, no, no. I mixed up who's who. But Trehadu uh, became wounded. Perfectly good. We gained some progress. Get some better stuff. Excellent. I'm attending the dance not simply because I am High Lord of the Castle, but because I want to see High Lady Rasala there. She looks resplendent, and when we finally have a moment to ourselves, I offer my suggestion. Join me in the circle for the next dance, my lady. I mean, there's there's no harm in asking to dance, right? Yeah, let's see if we can, if she wants to dance. Hi, lady and Rosala and I spun across the floor together, turning heads as she laughed to her heart's content. Excellent. That is very good. Inspiration. A change in direction. A traveler claiming to be employed under my knight Munius is brought before me, carrying a message from the adventurer. Fear not, my great lord, for Munius is in good health. I bring you news of the possibility to fund an even greater adventure. You see, Munius took a wrong turn somewhere and now near Hammerhall. Okay. Uh, Munius travel, traveling... Where is Hammerhall? This is Skyrim somewhere, right? Yeah. That's that's a long detour. <laughs> Munius traveling companion Unfurl. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Munius traveling companion unfurls. I thought his name was Unfurl or something. He unfurls a dirty map to show me where they ended up. He has enough funds to make it to Morrowind as planned, but suggests that with some additional funding, he can chase up a local rumor and bring home a great artifact. This is absurd. I'm not gonna fi uh, fund their self-indulgent outing. 
uh, returns to what he set out to do, or spend 60 to get higher quality and opinion. I mean, we got pretty good money. Yeah, I want better stuff. And that is the end to the war. I think I might negotiate a weak hook on you. Because I'm pretty sure we win this either way. No? Hmm. Maybe. Well, we might... Uh, actually, how much money can we get from these people? 50, 100, and a weak hook. Okay, so I might actually take the money. I don't think I want you... Actually. Yeah, weak hook. I think we might recruit them. It's always nice to have some people. Hmm. Yeah, all right. You can come in with the wrong religion. No, with the without hook, I mean. I will recruit you, demand conversion, and gain hook. Perfect. And I think we might just grab the money for these. Actually, we'll start with you, because I don't know how much money do you have. Ah, oh, plenty. Razzle both. Get a big chunk of money, and we'll go and siege some more. But... I need to end this episode here because it is starting to get long and we have a skill point as well. So let's just pop that in right right quick. There we go. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode. I'm very happy to be back in the Elder Kings. Having a I really like this mod. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.